down around here. Yeah, back to normal. So it lasted around seven hours. So that's what an outbreak, email outbreak looked like. That was that was storm. And then we found Beirut, which was probably still is one of the most advanced malware we've ever seen. Mebrut was probably written by some sort of gang operating both in Russia and in Italy. First infections were spread as drive-by downloads from a website. She's called Monica Bellucci. This is from Matrix 2. She's an Italian actress, and her website was the first website we saw that was actually spreading infections of Mebrut. So if you would visit monicabellucci.it, it would actually run a short script to infect your system, drop Mebrut, which would be a Windows boot sector infector. So it would write itself to the MBR of your hard drive, which means the next time when you boot up Windows, the next time you boot up your computer, the first thing that runs from your hard drive is already the malware. So the malware boots up first, it boots up its own small kernel, which it calls MAOS, Malware Operating System, and then it's the malware that boots up Windows. And every time when Windows during boot jumps to a higher ring, Mebrut jumps to a higher ring. In the end, Windows is up and running, and Mebrut is already in memory. And not a single file on your hard drive has been modified. And this is very, very hard to do. We were really surprised these guys had the know-how and funding to do this. But my favorite part about Mebrut, my favorite part about Mebrut is what happens when this happens. If your machine blue screens while you're infected by Mebrut. The Mebrut gang is so serious about their Q&A that when this happens, Windows has now crashed, but Mebrut is still running. And now Mebrut will take a diagnostic dump of your crashed Windows box and send the dump over the internet back to the guys so they can figure out why your box crashed and improve Mebrut to make sure it won't happen. Can you believe that? Yes. That's what I think. And then we enter the days of Partnerka. And these are the Russian affiliate networks that are one of the biggest headaches we have today. Affiliate networks where anybody can sign up through a website like this, to sign up as an affiliate to resell a product. And every time you sell the product, you get 50% of the, of the money to be made out of it. Now what's the product you're selling? Well, the product is, for example, this. This is Data Doctor 2010, written by a Ukrainian company operating in Kyiv. And this is a file fixing tool. It fixes corrupted files. So, for example, if you have a digital camera and you run out of battery and one of the images, the JPEG files on your memory card get corrupted, you can view it, this might fix it. It actually is a real product. It actually works. It actually fixes corrupted JPEGs and doc files and files like that. It's far from being the best product in the marketplace, but it's not fake either. It actually does things. The funny thing is that the company that made the software, they aren't selling and they aren't marketing their own product at all. All the sales and all the marketing are done through their affiliates. And all of their affiliates are online criminals. All of their affiliates are guys who have already created their own botnet and are now trying to find ways on how to monetize that botnet. How to turn those infected computers, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of infected computers, into cash. And the way they convert them into cash is that they force the owners of those computers to buy this product. Now, how do you force someone to buy a file fixing tool? Well, you do it by corrupting their files. So from the user's point of view, what the user sees, he's on his computer, he's working normally, and then suddenly in the middle of everything else, he gets this error message. That's a bit similar to what you saw with Blaster. But it's a bit different as well. If you look at what it says, it says unrecognized disk driver command. And unlike the message from Blaster, this message is not coming from Windows. Yes, it looks like a Windows message. It is not a Windows message. This message is displayed by the bot. So your machine is already infected and the bot shows you this message and then shuts down your Windows. Reboot Windows into Windows safe mode and shows another error message, which says Windows has recovered from serious error. Some files can be corrupted. That sounds pretty bad. So of course you would go and check your files. And guess what? Every single doc file, every single Excel file, every single PDF, every single text file, you can't open them. Your most valuable stuff on your computer, you've just lost it. They're all corrupted. Actually, they're not corrupted. They are encrypted. 
The bot on your computer has just encrypted all your files. And if every time you try to open them, they fail. So of course, by now, the user is panicked. Oh my god, I've had a hard drive cramp, I've lost all my files. And I can guarantee to you that every single user in this situation will be clicking on this repair file button right here, right? And as you might guess, what the repair file button does is that it will download and install Data Doctor 2010. And then when you click the file fixer button, it will scan your hard drive and it will find every single one of your corrupted documents. And when you click the fix it button, it will fix your files. Unfortunately, it will only fix one file because you're running an unregistered version. And if you want to fix the rest of your files, you have to buy the product which costs you 91.45. 50% of which goes to the company that made the product, 50% goes to the botnet master who infected your computer in the first place and who corrupted your files in the first place. So it's basically taking your files and asking for a ransom. Except that's not what the user thinks. What the user sees and thinks is that, oh my god, I had a hard drive crash. Thank god Microsoft recommended this great tool which fixed all my files perfectly. I'm going to recommend this tool to all my friends. So users are happy to pay the ransom to get their files. And this is much harder for us to fight because the company who made the product probably isn't breaking any laws. So they aren't infecting anybody, they're just fixing files. Yes, all of their resellers are criminals, but hey, things like that could happen. And we have open investigations. This is from Interpol's webpage. This is one of the guys who are, they are trying to find right now, who are having running operations like this. This guy was running Interactive Marketing Ukraine, which had revenues of $130 million by selling rogue file fixtures and rogue antivirus products. Then we have Configure, last year, of course, one of the biggest cases in history, great mystery, nobody knows who's behind it, nobody knows what's the motive, nobody knows whether these guys are still planning on using their botnet, which still has close to 10 million infected computers online today. 10 million. Think about that. The Configure is interesting in many ways. One thing it does is that it blocks, uh, it, it will not infect certain IP ranges, and it blocks all connections from those IP ranges to itself. And those IP ranges belong to different antivirus and security companies, including our IP range, which is interesting. Another interesting thing is how it spreads over USB sticks. Normal USB worms look like this. They create an auto-run file at the root of your USB stick with commands like this. This is not configured, this is just some random USB worm. Configure also creates an auto-run file on USB sticks. But the configure all run file looks like this. And when we first saw it, we just assumed that there's a bug. There's a bug in the virus, which isn't rare at all. But obviously, this will not work. That's just random binary garbage. That's not an in file at all. In files are ASCII files. But if you actually take a look at the file, which is random, changes every single time, around 30 to 40 kilobytes in size, if you just keep staring at it, if you just look at it, keep looking at it, you will eventually see that there are these snippets in the middle of all this binary junk. And it turns out that when you show an if file like this to Windows, Windows can happily ignore all the binary junk and interpret and use this command. So it actually works. And what it actually does is that when you put in a USB stick which is infected by configure, you get the autoplay functionality to look like this. But watch it carefully. There's two options here. The default option is open folder to view files, right here. But there's another one right here, open folder to view files. This is the real open folder to view files. This is the one created by configure. If you choose this one, you get infected. And that's the default option. So no wonder people click on that. You just put in a USB stick and you hit enter, you're infected. Then in January this year, we saw Operation Aurora in the news. That was the case of Google announcing that they've been infiltrated with targeted attacks. And these targeted attacks are fairly nasty. Uh, we've been watching them for five years, and they are completely different from all these money-making attacks. Because here, the attacker isn't interested in making money. This is all about espionage. Corporate espionage and country-to-country -country espionage. Well, what it typically looks like, here's a video that shows what happens when you open up an email attachment sent to you. So you get an email from someone you know. 
Hi, here's the file I promised to send to you in our last meeting last Thursday. And you had a meeting last Thursday. There's a file called Research Report, a PDF, and then we're going to open up that uh, file, that PDF file with Adobe Reader. Now watch carefully. Adobe is starting, it's starting. Here's Adobe Reader, and blam, it goes away. And it's still starting, and starting, and here's the file, everything looks great, except the file name at the corner it says book.pdf, and the file we opened was called research report.pdf. So this is not the file we opened. And if you go and have a look at the task manager or process monitor, you'll actually see that there's an extra file called a.exe suddenly in the root of drive C, and it's already executing. So yes, the PDF file we opened had a vulnerability in there, which exploited that reader, created two new files. One of them was the clean PDF file it showed just to fool the user. The other one is a backdoor which connects back to the spy, giving him full access to everything on the computer. And um, we've seen many of these. We had one case in UK with a huge billion dollar sized military contractor where the uh, R&D director's personal laptop was infected by one of these for 18 months before anybody noticed. So for a year and a half they were leaking information to an IP address in Taiwan. Nobody knows what exactly they was. And the files that are used in these attacks are very convincing. I have several examples here. These are all examples of files which have been used in these targeted attacks. What's common with them is that they look very credible. They look like real documents used in real company uh, use. But they're all fake and they all contain backdoors. And we've seen these in different languages as well. I don't read Arabian, but I'm sure that would be credible as well. Then we saw this year 3D anti terrorists. Why is this important? <coughs> well, it's important because here we have a phone virus which makes phone calls. We tried to investigate why people were reporting these weird phone calls from their Windows mobile phones. And we've realized that what's common with all the users who have the problem was they had all installed this game. The game is called 3D anti terrorist, which is basically a Counter Strike clone for Windows mobile devices. It looks like that. It's actually a fairly neat game. It's a commercial game written by a company in China called Huike. And this Chinese company, they've done nothing wrong. But a Russian hacker took this commercial Windows Mobile game, hacked the game, removed the copy protection, posted the hacked version to several download sites for free. So people were downloading this game by the thousands because it's a good game and now it's free. But of course there's also a modification in the code. Specifically a small modification which makes the phone issue phone calls for 55 seconds. Eight calls for 55 seconds once a month. And when you check where do these uh, numbers call and how much they cost you, when this happens it's going to cost you around 9 euros. So you will pay for this in your phone. And this money goes to the market. Well, how does that work? How does he actually get the money? Where do these numbers go? Well, these numbers go to the South Pole. They go to Somalia. They go to the small island nation of Sao Tome. And these are what we call short stopped numbers. So the basic idea is that they are rogue phone operators which claim that they, you know, for example, your phone call from USA to Somalia goes through when in fact, in reality, it gets stopped short at some much cheaper location, yet they bill you the full amount of the bill. And that money is then transferred to the owner of the number. So these are basically creating premium rate numbers out of normal numbers, which means there's no anti-fraud mechanisms in place, nobody actually monitors these numbers. And surprisingly, there's a wide range of companies selling numbers like these. So for example, if you want to, you can go right now, today, and buy yourself a phone number from North Korea. And when anybody dials that number in North Korea, you get money out of it in real time. So we expect to see much more mobile phone uh, malware doing exactly this. And I'm going to go over by two minutes because I just added new material about Stuxnet, which I'm sure many of you are aware of, and which I believe to be probably the most important malware we've seen in 10 years. Stuxnet was found in the summer. It was found because it used a zero-day vulnerability, the so-called LNK vulnerability. This one is spreading over USB sticks, infecting computers when you put the stick in. But there were many weird things about this. When it was investigated further, it was realized that no, it didn't just use a zero-day vulnerability, it had multiple zero-days. Not one, not two, but four different zero-days in the same malware. And we've never 
seen, that we've never seen ever, a malware which 